brothers and sisters in the Pauline family. My name is Sister Nelia Lianto, Pastorelli Sisters, and I'm assigned in Melbourne, Australia. The task that was uh, asked of me is to share uh, this resource, and it was completed through the help of other people. Ecumenism and Synod. Encyclical letter Fratelli Tutti on Fraternity and Social Friendship given in Assisi at the tomb of St. Francis on 3rd October, vigil of the Feast of the Saint in year 2020. At the conclusion of the encyclical, Pope Francis confessed that he was particularly inspired by St. Francis of Assisi, but also by others of our brothers and sisters who are not Catholics. Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, Mahatma Gandhi, and many more. He also mentioned another person of the faith who, drawing upon his intense experience of God, made a journey of transformation towards feeling a brother to all. This was the French Catholic missionary Charles de Foucault who was canonized on the 15th May, 2022. Pope Francis formulated two prayers, one for Christian unity and a prayer to the Creator. And we will begin a reflection together with the prayer of the Christ Christian unity. O oh God, Trinity of love, from the profound communion of your divine life, pour out upon us a torrent of fraternal love. Grant us the love reflected in the actions of Jesus and in his family of Nazareth and in the early Christian community. Grant that we Christians may lead the gospel, discovering Christ in each human being, recognizing him crucified in the sufferings of the abandoned and forgotten of our world, and risen in its brother or sister who makes a new start. Come, Holy Spirit, show us your beauty, reflected in all the peoples of the earth, so that we may discover anew that all are important and all are necessary, different faces of the one humanity that God so loves. Amen. The Second Vatican Council made the ecumenical search the center of the church life and activity. The Sacred Council exhorts all the Catholic faithful to recognize the signs of the times and to take an active and intelligent part in the work of ecumenism. Blessed John Paul is the second underlying the essential nature of this task saying, this unity which the Lord has bestowed on his church and in which he wishes to embrace all people is not something added on but it stands at the very heart of Christ's mission. Nor is it some secondary attribute of the community of his disciples. Rather, it belongs to the very essence of this community. The week of prayer for Christian unity has been celebrated for more than a century by Christians of all churches and ecclesial communities in order to invoke the extraordinary gift for which the Lord Jesus himself prayed at the Last Supper before his Passion. That they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me.
On another occasion, Pope Benedict XVI too had underlined the need for prayer. Jesus prayed to the Father for us so that we might be one. This means that we are unable to achieve unity by our own strength. Unity is above all a gift. It is a grace to be requested through prayer. Ecumenism has great need today as yesterday of the great invisible monastery, of that immense community of Christians of all traditions who without noise or fuss pray and offer their lives that unity may be achieved. Jesus knew this and opened the way for us by praying. Our prayer for unity is thus a humble but trusting participation in the prayer of the Lord, who promised that any prayer said in his name would be heard by the Father. As for the need to pray, our founder, Blessed James Alberione, told us, Prayer first of all. Prayer above all. Prayer the life of all. As regards editorial work with respect to non-Christians and non-Catholics, the first step is prayer and study. Prayer so as to love people with a sincere heart. He also proposed the priestly prayer of Jesus from John 17, 1 to 26, as part of our daily spiritual reading at the Eucharistic visit. He also compiled an ecumenical prayer to Mary found in the same book. The full and visible Christian unity that we long for demands that we let ourselves be transformed and that we conform ever more perfectly to the image of Christ. The unity we pray for requires an in inner conversion that is both common and personal. It is necessary to enter into new life in Christ, who is our true and definitive victory. It is necessary to open ourselves to one another, understanding all the elements of unity that God gives for us and gives us ever anew. It is necessary to be aware of the urgent need to bear witness among the people of our time to the living God who made himself known in Christ. Ongoing conversion is at the heart of Christian experience. Jesus called for our ongoing conversion as he proclaimed. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The exhortation to live in content, continual conversion is a core charismatic principle and belief of Pauline Christian living. Blessed Alberione will that all Pauline chapels display the words live in continual conversion, sometimes translated, be sorry for sin, while the original Latin course penitens tenete means live with a penitent heart. The prayers he left us reveal this constant mindfulness of the need to live in Christ, to lead Christ, Master, Shepherd. To my heart, substitute yours. To my love for God, for neighbor, for myself, substitute yours. Let your divine light 
most pure above all nature, substitute my simple human life. Ego sum vita, thus, in order to place you in me, in me, just as how it happened with St. Paul, visit in me, Christus. Live in me, O Jesus, eternal life. In the prayer to the Holy Spirit, Alderione thus makes us pray. Holy Spirit, form wisdom, Jesus Christ, truth in everything. Form good taste, feelings, and inclinations. Jesus Christ, life in everything. Form Jesus Christ way in me. New love for whatever Jesus Christ loves and for Jesus Christ himself. Ecumenism is an integral part of the synodal journey together under the leadership of Pope Francis. In a joint letter, of 28 October 2021, Cardinal Court Cope, President of Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, and Cardinal Mario Greg, General Secretary of the Synod of Bishops, addressed the bishops responsible for ecumenism in their Episcopal conferences and synods of the Oriental Catholic Churches. In the letter, the two cardinals offer practical suggestions aimed at implementing the ecumenical dimension of the synodal process in dioceses, episcopal conferences, and synods. The dialogue between Christians of different confessions united by one baptism has a special place in the synodal journey. Indeed, both synodality and ecumenism are processes of walking together. Firstly, if a synodal church is a church which listens, this listening should concern the totality of those who are honored by the name of Christian, since all the baptized participate to some degree in the census fidei. Secondly, as ecumenism can be understood as an exchange of gifts. One of the gifts Catholics can receive from the other Christians is precisely their experience and understanding of synodality. Thirdly, the synodal shaping of the Catholic Church at all levels has significant ecumenical implications as it makes it a more credible dialogue partner. And finally, the synodal process itself is an opportunity to further foster ecumenical relationships at all levels of the church, since the participation of ecumenical delegates has become the customary practice, not only in the synod of bishops, but also in the diocesan synods. The root of communion is love of Christ, who makes us overcome our prejudices to see in others a brother or sister to be loved always. Then, we will discover that the Christians of other confessions with their traditions, with their history, are gifts from God. They are gifts present within the territories of our diocesan and parish communities. Let us begin to pray for them and when possible with them. We will thus learn to love and appreciate them. In ecumenical dialogue, Pope Francis identifies the interlocutors as fellow pilgrims. He says that this means that 
we must have sincere trust in our fellow pilgrims, putting aside all suspicion of mistrust, with our gaze focused on our common quest, the radiant peace of God's face. Similarly, an attitude of openness in truth and in love must characterize the dialogue with non-Christian religions. There is an echo of this in the words of Algerioni to the Pastorelli sisters in 1965. Remember, the people of God on earth, which are pilgrims, as the Ecclesia says here, the pilgrim people. And in El Perfecto Sit Omadei, our heart needs to be more vast than the seas and the oceans. Love everyone. Think of everyone. And work with the spirit of the gospel, which is universality and mercy. Venite ad me omnes. During a service to mark the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity in 2014, Pope Francis acknowledged, we have all been damaged by divisions. None of us wishes to become a cause of scandal. Therefore, we are all journeying together fraternally on the road towards unity, bringing about unity even as we walk. That unity comes from the Holy Spirit and brings us something unique which only the Holy Spirit can do, that is reconciling our differences. The Lord waits for us all, accompanies us all, and with us all on this path of unity. Pope Francis picks up on the model of unity proposed by Oscar Coleman, of unity in reconciled diversity. Coleman, friend of Pope Paul VI and observer of Vatican II, summarized this model saying, Every Christian confession has a permanent spiritual gift, a charism, which it should preserve. Nurture, purify, and deepen, and which should not be given up for the sake of homogenization. John Paul II had introduced the idea of an ecumenical gift exchange in autonomous sin, and Francis repeats this in his comment. In ecumenical relations, it is important not only to know each other better, but also to recognize what the Spirit has sown in the other as a gift for us. Concluding, we must walk united with our differences. There is no other way to become one. This is the way of Jesus. Pope Francis teaches, to walk together is the constitutive way of the church the figure that enables us to interpret reality with the eyes and the heart of God, the condition for following the Lord Jesus and being servants of life in this wonderful time. The breath and pace of the sinners show what we are and the dynamism of communion that animates our decisions. Only in this way can we truly renew our pastoral ministry and adapt it to the mission of the church in today's world. Only in this way can we address the complexity of this time. 
thankful for the journey accomplished thus far and determined to continue it with Parisea. In her work, Pope Francis and Ecumenism, Susan K. Good also points out, Pope Francis draws attention to what he calls an ecumenism of love, which merits our respectful consideration. Those who kill Christians don't ask for your identity card to see which church you were baptized in. In some countries, they kill Christians for wearing a cross or having a Bible, and before they kill them, they do not ask them whether they are Anglican, Lutheran, Catholic, or Orthodox. Their blood is mixed. To those who kill, we are Christians. We are united in blood. June 29 is the date on which some Christian churches remember the martyrdoms of the apostles Peter and Paul. In the release, International now uses this day to inspire and encourage Christians to remember modern day martyrs for Christ and to pray for persecuted Christians. Above Westminster Abbey's Great West door stand 10 statues to modern martyrs. The martyrs are drawn from every continent and many Christian denominations and represent all who have been oppressed or persecuted for their faith. Among them are victims of Nazism, communism, and religious prejudice in the 20th century. They are St. Maximilian Kolbe from Poland, Manke Masimola from South Africa, Janani Lu from Uganda, Grand Duchess Elizabeth from Russia, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights leader who was assassinated, St. Oscar Romero, Archbishop in El Salvador, who was assassinated, Jetrix Bonhoeffer from Germany, killed by Nazis in 1945, Esther John from Pakistan, Lucien Tapiedi from Papua New Guinea, and Wang Zining, a pastor killed during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. Though the numbers really show up on popular radar in the West, the International Society for Human Rights reported that Christians are the targets of 80% of all acts of religious discrimination in the world today. Statistically speaking, that makes Christians by far the most persecuted religions body on the planet, according to John Allen in The Spectator. Indeed, an accumulation of blood that must not be forgotten. There is much more to explore on the theme of the ecumenical dimension of the Synod. May these insights we have shared with you inspire you to deepen your own research, but above all, may it kindle your prayer for the gift of Christian unity. Let us conclude with a second prayer that Pope Francis offered in his encyclical Fratelli Tutti. Lord, Father of our human family, you created all human beings equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit and inspire in us a dream of renewed encounter, dialogue, justice, and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and a more dignified world, a world without hunger, poverty, violence, and war. May our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown in each of us. And thus forge bonds of unity 
common projects, and shared dreams. Amen. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is with us. We belong to him.